I had a request for Hideshi Hino's Panorama of Hell by this user here. I was familiar with Hino, but only for his directorial duties in film, like the guinea pig series. I knew his backstory as an artist, as I've mentioned before in videos, that awful childhood that shaped a lot of his horror influences, but his actual manga I never knew much about. And well, I have to say I'm glad this user suggested this one for me because it's simply fantastic. There's much more to a story, to a manga, than your initial feelings. Hence why so many people get offended by the likes of Hino or Suehiro or Kago. Why not focus on the deeper messages though? The beautiful imagery. People can't get past the subject matter. Truth be told, I can't really blame them, but these artists have such great imagery and meaning behind these disturbing works that I feel like a broken record every time I attempt to defend them. So first things first, visually, the art. Well, I can honestly say I've never seen any manga artist draw like this. Can this even be called manga? This dude has influenced many artists, if not directly, then perhaps second hand. This particular story was released in 1984, but he was working on art even before that. Panorama of Hell is of course odd, but it's all intentional. It'll offend some, appeal to others, it's powerful regardless. This title suggests many different interpretations. The character in this story surrounds himself with hellish imagery, literally a panorama of hell. It could also reflect the many problems in his life, just a total cluster of misery. Not just personal problems, but aspects of society and history are touched upon, making this panorama a wider problem for people. In short, the entire world is a panorama of hell. But it goes deeper than that. Many moments in this short story are direct aspects taken from Hino's own life. Some creative liberties were taken, I'm sure, but it's more disturbing to think how much of this was taken from his own life and put into art. It starts off with this artist that has an obsession with blood, he uses blood to paint his works of art. Fair enough, there have been artists who've done such a thing in real life, morbid perhaps, but not totally out of the realm of possibility for an artist. That is, until we see other pieces of his art collection, what he wants to accomplish, his magnum opus, the panorama of hell, seems to be accomplished by consuming hydrochloric acid and puking up blood. And well, things get weirder from there as we see him talk about the inspirations for his art, what inspires him, such as the smell coming from a local crematorium, a dead animal strewn across a local cemetery. The way the artist is consumed with death is reflected through some of his imagery, like the moon to represent blood. It's brilliant, really. The interaction he has with his family is kind of heartwarming, to be honest. It's like an even more extreme Adam's family, but nothing they do is explicitly illegal. Sure, they have some weird interests, but if they all enjoy it and bond over it, is it really that weird? Maybe it's just a close-knit family enjoying common interests. It's rather sweet, isn't it? The wife even runs a bar for ghosts. That's a pretty original concept, and there's a lot of dark humor here that I like. But by the end of the story, I was left with conflicting feelings. The way the artist initially depicted his family was creepy but innocent enough, but things sort of turn all around. I won't spoil it, but it's a bit of a mind trip. And then we see aspects of the artist's childhood. What I did know of Hino and his troubling childhood was that it shaped a lot of his arts, but I didn't know that much of that was actually shown here in this story. The three generation of tattoos chapter is rather personal, as we do know that Hino's grandfather was a gambling yakuza. We know his father was a pig farmer, so all of these scenes, how much of it is fiction? 
Is the artist just a reflection of Hino himself? Well, obviously some things have to be fictional, but exactly how much? The chapter on the aftermath of World War II is a disturbing insight into Hino's life. Though he wasn't old enough to remember much of this aftermath, he has talked about aspects such as almost being killed, his family almost being killed during his travels. One aspect of this story that is perhaps my favorite is this power to kill others by means of, well, however you imagine it. A mortal having the power of a god. We've seen something similar in Death Note, but here this power was harnessed when the bomb was dropped on Japan, referred to as the Emperor of Hell. Yet another callback to that title, which caused a bizarre chain of reactions that reached all the way to his mother in Korea. So these powers grew in the womb alongside with him. But this artist is very reminiscent of a Poe narrator. How much of this is just a rambling of a madman? Can we really trust what this artist says? There's a lot of neat references throughout this manga, a lot of great little details. The moment the artist is talking about weird comic artists, well, it's pretty funny that Hino is the only one seen here, perhaps poking fun at himself. The mix of realism and the abstract contrasts, but it works so well here. And it's really one of a kind that I haven't seen before. It's one thing to create hellish stories like this if you've lived through a hellish life. It's another to do so just as a fan of horror. Most of the time a reader doesn't know much about an artist's backstory, as it's up to the reader to interpret the art or feel the emotions. Now, I'm not saying you have to have a miserable childhood to create something like this, but it certainly hits much harder knowing so. I'll be working on other suggestions, so if you want to recommend anything, let me know in the comments.